Tonight, consultation closes for controversial fracking across the far west. And authorities brace for more sweltering weather across the Spencer Gulf. From our seven Spencer Gulf studios, your nightly news with Ruby Kamane begins now. Good evening. The member for Barwon has slammed a state government proposal to explore underground gas reserves across the far west. Roy Butler claiming the public hasn't been kept in the loop and any project could lead to severe environmental damage. It's videos like these that reportedly show the damage fracking can cause. And while this was filmed five years ago, the fiery debate continues today. Locals say they're alarmed by adverts in newspapers seeking feedback over a state government proposal to begin exploration works for tight gas. Conventional gas I've got no problem with. It's the unconventional gas that I'm worried about. Saying that's because those gases need to be retrieved through fracking, which involves fracturing the ground to improve access, potentially damaging groundwater. These pipes that have to be punched down through good aquifers into coal seams have to be there for decades, centuries after this project's finished. A spokesperson for the Department of Planning, Industry and Environment says the consultation doesn't preempt any approval for future projects. Mr Butler describing the consultation as inadequate, the community given just seven days to register for their say. If this was a project that government was proud of and thought was a good idea and thought had the community support, why not come out publicly and make some noise about what they're intending to do? The industry body for gas and oil exploration saying more than 12 studies over the last decade have proved the process safe. The claims of, of fracking, uh, hydraulic fracturing being uh, the reason for that are just quite simply not true. Lachlan Eater, 7 Spencer Golf News. The Balaclava community is in mourning today following the death of a 13-year-old schoolboy yesterday afternoon. Police say the Year 8 student had been walking home from school when he was hit by a school bus on the corner of Wallace and May Streets. Emergency services rushed to the scene and despite their best efforts, the boy couldn't be saved. Today, students and teachers paid tribute to their classmate. Investigations into the incident continues. State emergency service crews are on high alert as weather conditions warm up over the coming days. While a cool change is predicted for Saturday, in the meantime they're urging vulnerable community members to keep cool and stay indoors. It may be the final few weeks of summer but the state is preparing to swelter. Uh, Port Augusta likely to get into the very low 40s. Uh, remaining areas around Spencer Gulf probably in the very high 30s. Yeah, we certainly do have some hot weather at the moment coming through. We have advice messages out for much of the north region for a low intensity heat wave. SES crews have been working around the clock with members meeting today in preparation for the unknown. SES always supports the Country Fire Service or the Metropolitan Fire Service and we certainly work with our other welfare agencies to ensure that people um, have places to go. They're urging vulnerable community members to remain vigilant. So where possible, stay at home, um, draw down the curtains and the blinds, make sure that you drink plenty of cool water, uh, avoid alcohol and coffee if you can. Do be aware of the build-up of that heat over the next couple of days. Remember to drink water, uh, avoid staying out in the sun for too long if you can. There'll be a slight relief this weekend, but residents are being warned summer isn't over yet. We'll have some warm weather to come um, and it's a little bit strange at the moment in the weather patterns because we do have roads closed up in the north of the state. Travellers are being urged to check these road closures before heading up north of our region. To get stuck into areas where they may not be able to access um, water or any other uh, supplies. Shari Hams, 7 Spencer Golf News. Still to come tonight, Port Piri residents say whom drivers are plaguing their street and a new digital hub offering more information on our ocean creatures. Welcome back. Police are calling on the community for information following reports of Hoon drivers targeting a quiet Port Piri street. Residents say they're fed up and have raised fears with children and animals frequenting the area. There's been reports Lamb Street continues to be the target of hoon drivers. Despite being a dirt road, residents urge it's just a matter of time before someone gets hurt. 
This footage revealing a driver playing a dangerous game on this quiet street. Losing control of the vehicle, residents were shocked by this CCTV after hearing the vehicle wreaking havoc just outside their home. They choose to remain anonymous but claim there's been a spate of hoon driving, including an incident covered by 7 Spencer Golf News mid last year. It's always uh, disappointing. It's irresponsible to put um, other road users and pedestrians and the like at risk. Now residents urge for this road to be bitumized, saying children regularly ride their bikes in the area and there are animals nearby. In a statement, Port Pirie Council says it's disappointed with the actions of irresponsible community members, but confirming there's nearly $300,000 on the table to seal five more roads across town. There is no confirmation, however, if Lamb Street is in the mix. Police say they'll be targeting hoon drivers across the region. And we'd like them to do it at the time if possible. So we can take immediate action and follow up straight away. Anyone with information is being urged to contact Crime Stoppers. Our heroes in orange will show what they're made of when Broken Hill competes in the SES Rescue Challenge next month. More than just a friendly competition, the training allowing the volunteers to polish their real life skills. A man trapped under heavy boxes, injured in a forklift incident. Crews getting to work to get the person to hospital. Thankfully, this is just a training exercise based on one of countless emergencies our SES crews face. Our skill sets go from road crash rescue right up to storms, uh, land search, uh, mat and nav. Our local crew putting those skills to the test, going up against other units from across New South Wales in the Western and Northern Rescue Challenge next month. It's just going to go in there, they're going to get a scenario and they've got uh, 45 minutes to do that scenario. We're working as a team in training and hopefully we'll do well, so um, most of us are pretty competitive. Hoping their unique Outback skill set will give them an advantage over the other brigades. Mine rescue is just one of the areas our locals are specially trained to deal with. Our skills out here are quite different to the regions over the east coast. And while it's all in the name of friendly competition, there is a serious side. We're polishing our skills at the same time, as well as being tested in areas that we're not sure that we'd come across. The team knowing today's drill could be tomorrow's emergency. <coughs> Lachlan Eater, 7 Spencer Golf News. While as Maritime Museum has received a new addition with the installation of a cuttlefish kiosk. The new interactive touchscreen now on show to the public just in time for the lead up of this year's cuttlefish season. This new interactive platform bringing this museum into the future. We managed to um, get um, a cuttlefish touchscreen kiosk um, which is um, a, a digital project um, that has been you know, in, in progress since 2017. The newly installed touchscreen, the latest addition to Wayala's Maritime Museum, located in the Natural History section, it's jam-packed with interesting information, as well as featuring specialised drone images and animation sequences. Where the name of cuttlefish came from, um, how the cuttlefish has been utilised by, by the humans uh, throughout the centuries, so that means, you know, for the ink, for the beautiful drawings. After three years in the making, Mr Mazurik says it's very exciting to see the project come to life, with so many visitors, including school groups and travellers, now able to benefit from the new resource. When I started working on the project back in 2017, I was mainly looking for uh, someone who was actually um, a company, you know, that, that has experience with museum projects. Adelaide company Disc Edits, who specialises in creative and immersive content for museums, Museums installing the new feature. We've done museum work for probably 20 odd years and we've done many touch screens like the one that we provided for, for Wyala. We haven't actually done a kiosk one before, this is the first one. Council encourage locals and visitors to come check out the new kiosk installed just in time for this year's cuttlefish season. Sophia Contagonis, 7 Spencer Golf News. Stay with us after the break, construction underway to revamp a regional town's main street and desperate calls for more volunteers to help out Wyala's food bank.
Hello again. Works are set to start this week on Corns Railway Terrace upgrades. The project is part of Stage 1 of the Town Streetscape Review, aiming to help beautify the main street. It's all happening in Corn as works get underway this week on Railway Terrace. Really exciting for us. Uh, this whole thing is going to be transformed, this road. The project aiming to give a facelift to the town's streetscapes, enhancing regional tourism and residential appeal. It's, it's something that the community has asked for for a long time. They've wanted their footpaths and they've wanted their roads better and uh, they wanted a bit of tidy up around the place. Featuring new walkways and parking for visitors, the makeover will include upgrades, helping to restore the town's heritage. The initiative coordinated by the Flinders Rangers Council, thanks to combined funding from federal government programs. It's a difference between people driving past and people stopping. Also saying it will help beautify the community, encouraging visitors to stay and see what Quorn has to offer. If there is a place for you to park and it's easy, if it is attractive, if there's shade, uh, if you do have somewhere to sit down and have your lunch, uh, these things all count. Grey MP Rowan Ramsey backing the community's decision to invest in the main streets. The connection of the uh, Bush Tucker walkway um, is, uh, you know, all part of that inner planning around Corn to make it more presentable and more attractive to tourists. Construction is expected to be completed by June. Katrina Mussin, 7 Spencer Golf News. Councillors in Broken Hill will return to the Chambers next week for the first time since the pandemic began. With only 18 people allowed in the public gallery, anyone wanting to attend the meeting must register through Council's website. Live streaming will continue for those who can't be there. The first meeting will be held next Wednesday evening. Whaler's Food Bank is calling for more volunteers to join the team, saying it's a great way to give back to the community. The group in desperate need for more helpers as activity at the local hub continues to grow. This new food bank volunteer enjoying giving back. Oh, it's really good. I, I like um, all the, uh, the people that I work with. It's really nice. It's nice when the customers come in and they're just really nice and appreciative of what we do for them. Volunteering at different organisations across the Steel City for the past three years, Cathy Crew says it's a rewarding opportunity. It's really nice. You hear a lot of customers that come in and they go, oh, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Getting their feedback to say how much we're helping, that is so rewarding, that's why we do it. With activity at this food hub, the busiest it's ever been, Food Bank South Australia is calling for more helpful volunteers. We are desperately in need of volunteers. Um, we're getting a growing rate of people through our food hub um, and our warehouse is also growing as well. Serving the Wayala community for more than 10 years, this food bank has put more than 500,000 meals on the table of families in need and distributing more than 250,000 kilograms of food over the last 18 months alone. The more volunteers we can get in, um, the more help we can give to the community. Locals can register to become a volunteer online. Sophia Contagonis, 7 Spencer Golf News. Stay with us after the break. We'll bring you all the latest prices at the petrol pump and Alex Sykes will join us with the weather details. Welcome back. Port Augusta will soon feature some new public art murals as Council welcomes expressions of interest from the community. It's hoped the artworks will encourage visitors to see what the city has to offer. Adding a pop of colour to Port Augusta. The city, soon to feature three new art murals, each representing the community's history and culture. So SANA have done this amazing artwork, um, they have coordinated the artists and have sought funding from Uniting Country South Australia through the Communities for Children project uh, to do a new art piece here in Port Augusta. Located on Commercial Road, this vibrant installation is just a taste of what the old radio rental site wall will soon become. So it adds vibrancy to the city and um, rather than a, you know, a blank wall, an amazing artwork is something that draws tourists. Supported by $7,500 of sponsorship funding from Oz Minerals, City Council is also seeking expressions of interest for two of the pieces. 
featuring Aboriginal artwork and local history. The initiative was put in place to look at some social artwork uh, to make the place more beautiful as a place and the CBD is one area we're trying to establish and create as a more presentable area. It's hoped the artworks will draw visitors to the city, helping to paint a picture of Port Augusta. As a council would like to do a, a mural map so that when tourists come they can have you know a walk through the city to see all the different public arts. Submissions close on March 10. Katrina Musson, 7 Spencer Golf News. Let's go around the region and see where you can get the best price at the Bowser. Here's Lachlan Isher with this week's Fuel Watch. The gradual price climb continues once again. We have seen small price increases every week this year, but they do add up. Take a look at Wyala, for instance. Unleaded there is $1.32 a litre. In mid-January, that was $1.21. We haven't seen any huge jumps, but it does go to show you how a few cents a week can make a difference. Broken Hill motorists have been hit the hardest this time round, up to $1.35. That's a four cent increase on last week. In Port Lincoln, you'll pay $1.31 a litre. Port Augusta and Kadena have also climbed up to $1.28 and $1.28. 27 respectively. Port Pirie once again the pick of the bunch, just under a dollar 25 there. Adelaide's been a bit of a roller coaster lately. Lots of ups and downs. The latest 20 cent jump from last week. Over to Diesel now, where there's still no sign of a reprieve. Red arrows right across the board. Wyala and Broken Hill feeling the pain again. A dollar 31 in the Steel City and a dollar 36 in the Silver City. Port Augusta's prices have jumped by three cents to $1.27 a litre. Similar changes in Kadena sees the price go up there to $1.26. Port Pirie $1.24 and Port Lincoln is the silver lining, just $1.23. It's cheaper to fill up in Adelaide if you can, even with an increase there. A litre of diesel setting you back $1.22 a litre. Finally, to auto gas where the ship steadies a bit. Port Lincoln and Wyala unchanged at a dollar a litre. Port Pirie and Broken Hill, 91 cents, although prices in Broken Hill have gone up ever so slightly. Just a tiny difference in Kadena. And spare a thought for drivers in Port Augusta, a seven cent increase sees the price of gas go up to 97 cents a litre. Now remember that these prices are the regional averages and do not reflect any one particular outlet. And if you do spot unleaded, diesel or auto gas cheaper, be sure to let us know on our Facebook page. Time now to take a look at what's happening in the weather. Here's Alex Sykes. Thanks, Ruby. As Shari reported earlier this evening, it's been a hot day across the Gulf today, with temperatures peaking in the high 30s. From 3pm, Port Augusta was very hot and sunny, a top of 39 degrees. Port Lincoln recorded the region's lowest temperature of 33 and a degree warmer in Broken Hill, 34. Taking a look across the rest of the region now, Whala and Cooper Pedy both sunny and 37. Very hot and sunny in Port Pirie, Woodna, Cleve and Kadena, all a top of 39. Claire and Adelaide both sunny and 36 degrees. Taking a look at the satellite image now, patches of bright looking jet stream cloud over eastern SA is not rain bearing. Skies are generally clear elsewhere under high pressure and a hot dry air mass. Moving on to tomorrow's weather outlook now and we'll start with the Gulf waters. Southeasterly to northeasterly winds around 10 knots, seas below 1 metre and south to southwesterly swell also below 1 metre. And those hot and sunny conditions will continue tomorrow. Port Lincoln sunny and 33, very hot and sunny in Cleve, a top of 38 degrees there. Woodner set to reach a top of 41. Whale is sunny and 37, Port Augusta set to reach a top of 40, Kadena a top of 37 degrees. Port Pirie, very hot and sunny, 39 degrees. Clare, sunny and 36. And Broken Hill be sunny and a top of 33 degrees. Taking a look further through the week now, partly cloudy conditions on Friday, a top of 39 degrees in both Cooper Pedy and Port Pirie. Sunny and 35 in Broken Hill. Partly cloudy in Kadena, also 35 degrees. Port Lincoln said to have the region's lowest temperature of 29, while Port 
Augusta will have the region's top of 40 and if you're heading to Adelaide it'll be a top of 34 there. Similar conditions heading into the weekend a top of 36 degrees in Cooper Pedy and Broken Hill on Saturday, 30 degrees in both Port Augusta and Port Pirie, 27 and cloudy in Whaler and Adelaide, 23 to be the top in Port Lincoln. And on Sunday it'll be sunny in both the far north and east of the Gulf, Broken Hill 35, Cooper Pedy set to top 33, cloudy and 25 in both Whaler and Adelaide, a max of 27 degrees in Port Augusta, a degree warmer in Port Pirie 28, Kadena set to reach 26, a high of 29 in Woodna and 23 degrees in Port Lincoln. So Ruby, definitely some relief on the way from those hot conditions later in the week and that's all the weather from me for tonight. I'll be back later with a weather update. Back to you. Wonderful. Thanks for that, Alex. And that's the local news this Wednesday evening. Thanks for joining us. I'll have updates later. Until then, enjoy your evening. Good night.